guys, it's Jonathan from Bullet Motorsports. Today we're going to talk about a parasitic draw we have on our Humvee. Our, this is an M998. I'm going to show you how to diagnose it and the main causes. So if you come over here, I'm going to show you the tools we're going to use today. So normally it's a grounding issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to check all of our studs. We're going to clean them up and retighten them. You're going to use a half inch for your batteries. Uh, this will be for your starter and then for your starter, uh, the smaller bolt for your starter. That's a, uh, I believe it's a 5 16 then you have a 15 for your stud on your engine, and then you're gonna need a screwdriver for your alternator, and there are two different bolt sizes depending on which alternator you have. You're also gonna need a multimeter that can read parasitic draw. Most of these are under $100. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one, but it's gonna be able to show us the amperage draw that we're having. If you follow me, I'm gonna show you the, the main causes of a parasitic draw on a truck, specifically a Humvee. So, you're going to have a grounding issue that we talked about. It's either going to be a starter that has a stuck relay, so it's pulling power while the truck is off. You're going to have an alternator that's going to be doing the same thing if it has a bat, if, it, if it's bad inside, essentially. And your smart box, or your ECM. Your ECM can be on when your truck is off. It doesn't click off. So we're going to look and see if it has accessories that are going to damage or pull amperage. So you're going to look for aftermarket stereo lights, a winch, onboard air, Etc. So the normal parasitic draw on these trucks is 0.03 to 0.05 amps. Uh, I say that because some of these trucks have a four lady transmission, the A2s, the 10, 97s, and those ECMs are going to pull voltage. Normally you don't want any draw, but this is a acceptable range. So up to 0.05 amps getting pulled is okay. It's not going to kill your battery over a two month period or three month period. You're going to have to start it up, obviously like anything. But what we're trying to do here today is to get no draw so we can keep this guy happy and he can enjoy it and not worry about it. Also, we'll talk about the grounding kit later on, but essentially you're gonna connect your smart box, your starter, your generator, and your chassis, and then your engine. Let's go ahead and figure this out. So here's our basic multimeter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the 15 amp setting. If you have an, a different style multimeter, you can look at the instructions to see which setting it should be on for parasitic draw. I just want to see how many amps it's pulling while the truck is off. So we're going to put it into the 15 amp right there, and I'm also going to put the uh, positive terminal on 15 amp. I just pulled off the terminal with a half inch. That's going to be the, uh, the stud right here. That's what tightens it onto the lead right there. Leave this right here. I've already removed the doghouse so that we can get to our stud that has the beginnings of a grounding kit. So a grounding kit is made by a company called Cascar, or you can build one yourself, and it's a spider web that goes to all the grounding points, which would be your starter, alternator, ECM, your engine block, and your body ground. But let's figure out what's going on here with this problem. So I've got my multimeter here, and I've pulled it off of my negative terminal. Whenever you remove one of these systems that we're gonna test, you're gonna always disconnect it or remove these wires. So right now, I'm gonna put my positive terminal onto this, into the lead. I'm gonna to touch this. We're pulling right now 3. Point, about around three amps, constant. If I touch it, it'll hold on there. So 2.8 to three amps, that's not normal. I'm gonna show you what normal is. Let's go ahead and take a little ride. Okay, so we're gonna look at this 1097. We're gonna check the studs, the same thing we just did on the prior one. I've already loosened the terminal, that half inch terminal. Make sure you don't fall in the bushes. So we're gonna do the same test that we did prior. Remember it was around three, pulling around three amps. We're gonna put it into the 15 amp setting again. Just put it right here. Take your positive, put it onto your ground, and then touch your terminal. And you can see that this one's pulling point zero three, which is normal. And this is a 480 truck with another computer and it's pulling, this is proper. You can let this truck sit and it's not gonna die. The other truck right now is killing the battery within two days, so that's not normal. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. Okay, so this truck has an aftermarket stereo. It has a wet sound AS10 bar. I've already checked this to see if it's pulling amperage. It's not. So the next step is to go to the starter because the power comes from the batteries. It goes to a distribution block right here for a grounding block, and then your positive stud. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first clean up the terminals here, and then we're gonna go to the starter because the starter webs out to all of these accessories and the ECM. So once we disconnect that, we'll see if power's still getting pulled, 
and we'll know to go to the next piece, which will be the alternator, and then we're going to go to the ECM. I'm going to take the battery hole down, half inch, all around. And then we've got a crossover cable we're going to pull off. Thanks for the help, Kelly. Anytime. Ooh. Don't say that, we make more videos. The rear battery, which is our... This right here. And then this is the stud I want to clean up. So. It looks pretty gross. I'm going to take all of the grounds off. We're going to hit it with the uh, with the abrasive wheel, and then we're going to put everything back together. And we're going to test it, and then we're going to continue on. What we're going to do is take the ground off. It's a 9 16 That goes to the first battery. Feels pretty good, but we're going to clean it up anyways. all this up too, all these bolts. Anything on this side. I hope this is the issue. I don't have to go any further. Alright, so now we're going to hit these spots. See the difference starting to clean up. All right, so I cleaned up all the connections. Let's try it out. All right, so I'm looking at our positive shunt as well, and I think that we should definitely clean it up. Um, look at all the residue there. This is your positive port. And then if you, let me grab this phone. I don't know if you could see, but right there, it's a little bit of an issue. I see some wires that look a little suspect. There's totally gonna be a problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the solarizer, which is like a, they just have like wires just coiled up here. And it must've been because this used to have uh, electronics in the back, but they're all touching each other. This is definitely a, an issue. I need a zip tie cutter. You get it? That'll work. No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull this terminal down. Also, it's touching the manifold. What the heck is that? Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm just worried because there's a fray here, and it's positive and negative touching. So the other side of this is probably still hooked up to the truck, and that's most likely the issue. Also, whoever ran the grounding kit on this truck is an idiot, and we're gonna have to fix that. See, it's touching. Oh, it. Huh? Yeah, but I'm not going to do that today. I just want to figure out this issue, yeah. and then we'll go ahead and fix that tomorrow. I mean, why would you run it on the manifold? What are they thinking, Kelly? Under. I'm going under. I cleaned up all the nuts. Um, 
for the terminal for the positive because there was a crazy wiring disaster going on. But we cleaned up everything. We're gonna put it back together and see if it's drawing voltage. Hopefully this is the end of this parasitic drop. Fun. We're putting it all back together now. I cleaned all the shunts for the positive. We pulled that disastrous wire out of there. I also cleaned up the terminals for the grounding block. We're gonna put the batteries in here. I did this first because I don't wanna to have to keep pulling the batteries out when we test all the other systems, if this doesn't fix it, which I think it will. I think I fixed it. So that was our problem. It was literally two positive and negatives touching together and we've solved it. So let me show you what to do for the next steps if this doesn't solve your problem. Obviously this is like a one of a kind thing. The next thing is your starter. So you're gonna to go to your starter, you're gonna remove the terminals from there and then you're going to check the amp pole from, with your meter. And if you, you have no amp pole, that's obviously your issue. If you still have a continuous pull of power, you're gonna hook that back up and you're gonna to go to your next component, which is gonna be your uh, generator or your alternator. This is a 60 amp, but there are 200 amps as well, and that usually comes with a 4L80 or with a A2 version. Uh, you're gonna take these shunts off here. So you're gonna take your protective cover off. Don't forget to take your battery, or disconnect your batteries because you can fry your computer. You don't wanna cause more problems. You're gonna do that. If you still have draw after disconnecting this with your starter hooked up, you're gonna to go to your ECM and check your ECM. One quick way to test your ECM is to have it in the off position and have someone come over here and touch your, your battery terminal. So take your negative terminal off your main, your main harness and then touch it. Usually you'll hear inside the solenoids click. If the solenoid's clicking with the, with the key to, or the ignition not on, that means that your box is bad. Another way to test it is to disconnect your ECM. Power's still gonna to run to your starter and your accessories because that's part of the veins of the truck um, and you'll be able to see if you're still pulling power. So if, you're, if you disconnect the computer and it's, there's no amp draw or if there's a, you know, the correct amount of amp draw, which is acceptable, you're gonna know that it was this. Also, as I recommend, always do a grounding kit. The grounding kit is something like this. Uh, it's a thick gauge wire that's gonna go to your ECM to your body harness, which is behind your filter, to your starter, and to your uh, alternator. That's a great thing. Also the engine block as well. I'll show you if you look through the truck. Right here is where the uh, where you would want to put it. So that, your, that was the next step I would have done if I had an issue. If there was still a draw, I was gonna hit all the grounding spots just to make sure that we had good connection. But I'm glad I looked at that. It was just from, an, uh, from a wire that was there prior and I appreciate it. Please subscribe for more content like this, and if you like classic cars or going off-road, peace.